doing today? This is Rich, and we have Rich to be live with a very special guest, the CEO and president of Kalinex Mines Inc., Max Porterfield. How are you doing today, Max? I'm doing great, thanks. Excited to be here. Excited to have you here today, and thank you for joining us. And let's talk a little bit about your company. So first and foremost, I want to ask you a question about exploration. Can an exploration company soar and succeed both during a recession or a slow growth economy and a booming one? I mean, is it independent of general conditions? Can you give some examples, please? I think uh, every, every business you're in is going to be impacted by things that um, are out of their control. You saw this uh, in particular in the base metal space uh, when you had the um, U.S.-Chinese trade tensions and the trade wars kind of kick up, had a dramatic impact on global uh, zinc prices as well as other, other metals out there due to global growth concerns moving forward. Uh, with that being said, you're also seeing it again with the coronavirus, which I think you know, that the handling of that, the response that's been appropriate and um, measured, but I think the media hysteria around that's kind of also been detrimental and blown out of proportion given what it is relative to um, you know, other, other things out there. Uh, with that being said, though, uh, exploration is, is really one of the few businesses out there where you can create a tremendous amount of wealth for your shareholders, and that's through uh, discovery. Uh, and that's kind of one of the things that we're primarily are focused on, again, is to, to go out there and make discoveries within Canada. Um, and an economic discovery is going to make investors money no matter the market. Absolutely. And what do you think is the upside right now in precious metals, specifically gold and silver, to very hot commodities in a world with endless government debts, negative real rates, and no solution in the foreseeable future? Well, I think it's, it's going to be a, a strong, uh, strong market for, for precious metals for sure. Uh, you know, any negative real interest rate environment you're in, you're going to see the precious metals perform well. Year to date, you've seen, uh, or, or more recently, you've seen gold perform quite well. Uh, it's pulled back a bit, um, but I think it's healthier in a longer term bull market for the precious metal space. It's underpinned by everything that you've kind of mentioned there. So uh, I definitely see higher prices. It's going to be really good for the overall industry as a whole. Uh, people don't realize it, but over three quarters of the money's raised capital spent uh, as well in terms of an exploration actually does go to, to gold exploration. So healthy gold market is also going to be a healthy junior exploration market as a whole. Very good. Now, the company that you're leading, Kalinex Mines, has been around for several years. In terms of market cap, we're talking about a very small company, only about $4.3 million in market cap Canadian, out of which Canadian $2.6 million is cash, meaning the enterprise value is only about $1.7 million Canadian. In other words, your portfolio of assets that are base metal centered with a key component of precious metals in them, along with the intangibles like your expertise level and rapport with shareholders and institutions is not being valued highly by investors. Do you think this is justified or not? I don't think it's justified uh, at, at all, but obviously I mean, the valuation is historically cheap uh, and, and we're not alone in that regard. As I mentioned earlier with uh, the pullback that you saw in the base metal space, uh, you know, that had a big impact on equity valuations. So, you know, as a company, uh, just about two years ago, uh, when this all kind of kick started with the, the trade tensions and what led to the drawdown in zinc prices, um, you know, we were trading an evaluation of between 30 to $35 million valuation. So to come down to, you know, $7 million valuation today, when the assets in the company haven't gotten any worse or had dramatically impacted, and in fact, we've done a lot of work on the exploration front to generate some very compelling exploration targets that can create a lot of value that we're actively out there testing right now um, is, is quite unjustified, but it's a huge buying opportunity, uh, which is one of the reasons I was a big buyer of the stock last year, uh, you know, buying into this drawdown that you saw in the, in the share price. Now, can you tell us about your projects and what you plan to do with them or with the ones you're more focused on in order to de-risk them extract the value and deploy an exit strategy for shareholders? Sure, absolutely. So we're focused on um, three of prolific Canadian mining jurisdictions. And really the portfolio is again, in acquiring assets that are in close proximity to existing infrastructure. Uh, the, the biggest hurdle uh, that a lot of these discoveries have is the upfront CapEx to go into production. It can be you know, billions of dollars, quite frankly, given the location and 
getting the people, the, the power, the water, the access, and all the infrastructure put in place uh, can really uh, kind of be the big, big hurdle for, for an exploration company when they make a discovery. Uh, so when you really focus on making those discoveries within close proximity and infrastructure, that's going to compress your upfront capital costs because it's inherently already there. Uh, and reduce your hurdles dramatically in terms of you know making a discovery that's economic and that, you know has a big benefit. You know I like to say that we're doing um, purpose-based exploration in a lot of ways. Right now, again, we're focusing three camps. Uh, we're currently drilling in the Bathurst Camp of New Brunswick. Uh, this is an area we had a maiden PEA on our Nash Creek and Superject projects. Uh, we recently acquired another uh, smaller, higher-grade historic resource uh, at our Headway property. Uh, and all the drilling that we're doing out there is to really grow the scale of the mineralization that we already have to find uh, through aggressive drilling campaign that we've been working on over the past year and a half or so in terms of target generation. So we're quite excited about that. And again, in terms of the purpose base, uh, this is an area, again, that's got a rich mining history. The Brunswick Number 12 mine was really the flagship mine shut down in 2013. At one point, that was the largest underground zinc mine in the world. Um, and again, that's led to a lot of job losses in the area from you know mining mine shutting down in in the Bathurst camp as well as the, the forestry industry obviously being impacted. Uh, you've got over 20% un unemployment rate in Lorne where the Nash Creek deposit sits, and just down the road in Baldoon, there's uh, over a 20% unemployment rate where there's the key infrastructure, um, and they're actually shutting down a lead smelter there, uh, which is going to really today accounts for 80% of the jobs in Baldoon. So doing exploration in these type of areas, we have the people, you have all that infrastructure in place, and you've got the geologic pedigree, uh, it creates a lot of opportunities. We also have an, an ambitious exploration campaign in Flint Fawn uh, Camp of Northern Manitoba. Again, Flint Fawn's a jurisdiction that's had 32 mines and counting over the past almost 100 years. Uh, the 777 mine, which is a flagship mine uh, in the town of Flint Fawn, that's been operating uh, since 2004. Um, is again uh, going to be shutting down in early 2022. There is no new discovery and new mine to go in, into production and to take that place. And so making an economic discovery in an area that's got such a, a prolific history and there's immediate need uh, and the community really depends on is, is really of importance to us uh, as well. Uh, with that being said, we also have uh, a gold, silver, zinc, copper deposit. It's a VMS deposit in Newfoundland called Point Leamington. Uh, and we're looking at that and different opportunities there uh, from a metallurgical uh, standpoint, as well as from an exploration standpoint, generating targets to be tested later this year. Uh, and then that all aside, we're always looking for m &A opportunities in any of these camps uh, to kind of put together with our already you know, existing portfolio. So that's kind of what we're up to. That's how we see things and how we're, you know, our objective moving forward to aggressively create value to the shareholder base. Very good. Now you mentioned that you bought shares last year. So, do you own shares personally? And can you kind of give us an idea of how much shares are held by friendlies or insiders within the company? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I am a rather significant shareholder. I own roughly 4% of the uh, shares outstanding. Uh, you know, my family in total, I think, in addition to myself, uh, owns just under 10%. Uh, resource capital funds, a very large private equity fund has been a long-term supporter of the company, owns just under 10%. Uh, and then family offices own another 10%. And that's one of the other things in terms of outside of the, the, uh, the really supportive shareholder base and everyone having skin in the game, uh, per se, on the team, uh, is we also consolidated the share structure last year. Uh, and that's a, you know kind of be a big component because all ships will rise in a rising tide. Uh, and you know, we're gonna outperform uh, you know, in that regard because of the, the, the share structure and, and going through the consolidation process after um, kind of uh, taking the lumps that we had from the, uh, the, the drawdown in base metal prices uh, in 2018. Now, how passionate are you about Calinex? What would it mean for you to get this right? <laughs> well, if I haven't come off as passionate, I don't know if I ever will, but uh, I'm extremely passionate about what we're doing. Obviously very, very excited about what we're doing. Quite frankly, if I wasn't doing this, I don't know what else I would be doing. Uh, a discovery in Flint Flown mean the world to me. Uh, we've got a long history uh, in, in, as a corporate history in the Flint Flown camp and, and coming in and learning about that history. Uh, actually, being an American, I'm a Canadian now as well. Um, but, you know, this town, I, I can go anywhere in the world and, and 
I can mention Flin Flon, and someone will have heard of it in an odd way. And, and for a town that had a peak population of 15,000 people, uh, it, this really kind of uh, made a mark as, as a, a small town can here in Canada. Uh, and then in the Bathurst camp and in the Buckins camp, uh, being able to drive those um, those assets forward is, is obviously of utmost importance, and it can have a huge impact to those communities as well, uh, as well as from the you know the, the tax revenue being thrown off uh, these large uh, projects. Now, there's investors that are going to be watching this video all over the world. How can they get in contact with you and your company and learn more about this amazing project that you're part of? Yeah, you can visit our website at, at calinex.ca. That's C-A-L-L-I-N-E-X.ca. Uh, our contact details are there. You can give us a call uh, as well as email. And then uh, most importantly, if you want to purchase shares, they can obviously do that on the TSX Venture under the ticker CNX, as well as on the OTCQX, I'm sorry, OTC market in the United States under the ticker CLLXF. That is fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This is the CEO, Max Porterfield of Calinex Mines. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye.